pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a rather unique video in that I am broadcasting it to all of my subscribers, anyone who's watching it, but I'm really narrow casting it to a fellow Booktuber, Natalie, whose channel My Reading Days is a new favorite of mine. If you haven't checked out her channel, please check it. She does some of the best vlogs, vlogs, vlogs that I've seen on Booktube, and she and I are book buddy chums. Something she said on a recent video, or maybe it was something I said on a recent video, but somehow in one or the other of our comment sections, we started talking about Indian fiction, Indian literature, and it's a shared interest. I have read quite a few, maybe a half dozen Indian novels over the last few years. Absolutely loved them. Each and every one of them was five stars. The most recent one, the review will have gone up the day before, or the, will be going up the day after this. One Part Woman by Permal Mergen. I just love Indian literature. And my buddy readers, I don't think they're deeply uninterested in Indian literature, but I haven't found somebody who's really in the groove like I want to get deeply, deeply into the groove of Indian literature. And so I think Natalie is the one. So I'm going to tell her what Indian short story collections and especially novels that I have in my collection. And just to start the ball rolling on what buddy reads we might do. So to start with, I would say... I would like to do maybe three, maximum four, buddy reads of any of these books or anything that Natalie has. I hope I've been pronouncing her name. I keep, I always pronounce Nat, Nat, Natalie, but it's Natalie. So apologies when I slip up and go back to the way that I said it for the first 52 years of my life until I met her. But I've got a pretty big stack here. So I'm just going to tell you all, but especially Natalie. What I've got, I've even got a few on Scribd that I'll, maybe even something on Kindle. So I'll go through all of that, and then I think Natalie might do her own video. But anyway, I'm not going to limit this to buddy reading it with Natalie only. So if any of the rest of you, but like I say, I would like to read three or four of these this year. And the earliest that I'd be able to schedule a buddy read, with the exception of the one chunkster. There's a possibility I could fit it into the Tome Topple kind of challenge that I'm giving myself in March, but in fact, I think I'll start with that one. But the other one's April at the earliest, and then, you know, every couple months do a, a different one. Does this make sense? So yes, let's start with The Chunkster, A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. Look at the mother, the mother of all Indian novels, clocking in at almost 1,350 pages. What a monster novel. I am committed to doing two massive tomes. One starting later in February for my Black History Month reading challenge, continuing over into March, and one, The Tale of Genji with Britta, starting the second half of March and spilling over table. I'm not sure. Something like that. But I kind of want to add this to the mix. If somebody... I won't be able to probably start and finish it in March, but start it in March. But also I can wait, do it later in the year or do it next year, whatever. But this is a classic, modern classic. I remember when it was published, 1993. I've heard really nothing but good things about it. So that is one of them on my stack. Every time I go away, I try to, try to, and just brilliant at always staying and coming back to this exact same place. I don't think I have mastered that yet, but I've got a little piece of bubble wrap where I put my left foot. So when I go into the editing, I'll see how well I did. Next, I don't remember a thing about this. It's called The World in My Hands by K. Anis Ahmed. And I bought this here in Tokyo. It was published in India in 2013. Oh, actually, this is Bangladesh, but I will include this. This is a Bangladeshi novel, which I, I started one and bailed on. And I'm really eager to read a good novel from Bangladesh. I don't know if this is it. It's about a newspaper editor, a darkly satirical debut novel. I'll put the link to the synopsis in Goodreads, but I have it. And this one might be hard to find because it's a, the, the edition I have is was published by Random House India. 
This one is one that most people know of. If you've, if you've heard of any novels from India, you've heard of Jhumpa Lahiri's The Namesake. I just heard Kendra Winchester on her do her favorite reads of 2018, not including the Women's Prize nominees. And this was her top backlist read of 2018. I have heard nothing but glowing reviews of this, and I have it, and it is about an Indo-American guy who was named Gogol after the Russian novelist. It's supposed to be absolutely amazing. Would love to buddy read this. This one is from NYRB Books, all about H. Hatter by G. V. Dasani. It's obscure, other than that it's recently been, how recently? Reprinted by NYRB Books, 2007 maybe. Wildly funny and wonderfully bizarre. The protagonist, who apparently would be H. Hatar, is the son of a European merchant officer and a lady from Penang, raised and educated in the missionary schools in Calcutta. Pretty interesting cover, don't you think? A much more mainstream, and I'm dying to read this writer, especially because Eric Carl Anderson raves about him, Neil Mukherjee's A Life Apart, and this is his debut from uh, 2008. The protagonist is 22, recently orphaned, and finds the chance to start a new life uh, by going to, from Calcutta to Oxford. Neil Mukherjee just sounds like an incredibly fascinating writer, but I haven't read a word he's written, and this is his debut, and I want to read it! I also very, very much want to read this writer, Jeet Tayal. Narcopolis, and it's all about the drug scene in Bombay in the, in the 1970s, and the first chapter, if you Google this with my channel name, if you Google Narcopolis and Sean the Book Maniac, you'll find my book haul video where I read the first page, and it was just mesmerizingly good, and I died to read this. It's a pretty flashy cover too, don't you think? I have no idea whether this one is easy to find, but I picked up a used copy a couple of years ago, That Long Silence by Shashi Deshpande. And Deshpande is a female Indian writer. This was published by Virago Press in 1988. And it's about a husband and wife from Bombay who disappear and abandon their children under suspicion of the husband's business malpractice. That's all I read. I don't like to read the whole shebang on the back because I like to go into the book blind, but this is another one. This is another find at a used bookstore in Tokyo that is, as far as I know, only published in India, so maybe hard to find, but it sounds so fascinating. It's a book of short stories published in Hyderabad by the writer Fanishar Nat Renu. Pants Light and Other Stories, and it's fascinating. I love the cover set in Bihar. The writer Renu was born in 1921, died in 1977, one of Hindi's foremost writers. So the world of these stories is rural Bihar, a world of poverty and so on. And this was published in India in 2010. So if anybody can find a copy and wants to buddy read these short stories from India, I'm game! This was nominated for maybe the Booker or something a few years ago, The White Tiger by Aravind Adiga. I've heard mixed reviews, but I would like to give it a try. I picked up a nice hardcover copy for like $2 in Saskatoon. Just a little bit of a library stamp on the back, but otherwise in perfect condition. The protagonist, Balram Hawai, is a servant, philosopher, entrepreneur, and murderer. The White Tiger. I am not going to say anything more about this other than to point you toward the, re the pre-review, the the uh, book haul video that was devoted exclusively to this book because of its fabulous title and the details about it. Father May Be an Elephant and Mother Only a Small Basket, But by Gogu Shamala. And Gogu Shamala is also based in Hyderabad and she is from the Dalit. I don't think ethnicity is the right word, but do you know what I mean? It's uh, uh, pejoratively, offensively called the untouchable cast and this is a collection of short stories and only available from India. I got a copy from New Zealand and had trouble getting it but I'm dying to read it. Check out the video that I devoted to this book and if you can get a copy I want to buddy read it. I definitely want to read this one this year. 
The Impressionist by Harry Kunzru. Harry Kunzru is an Indo-British writer, now living in the U.S., and I read his White Tears a couple of years ago. It blew me away. I might be rereading it next month if I can fit it in. And this, this is his debut novel. And the protagonist's journey, Pran Nath's, begins in India and carries him to Oxford. Do you see a pattern here? I loved White Tears so much, I want to read everything this man has ever written, and I would like to start with The Impressionist by Harry Kunzru. Ah, this one I just bought in the summer, but it's got a white cover which gets easily scuffed. I'm not happy about that. It's called Immigrant Montana, but you can see the other words are crossed out, by Amitabha Kumar, an Indo-American writer, and it's about an Indian immigrant to America. When does... The protagonist arrives. He arrives in post-American... He arrives in post-Reagan America. And I haven't heard very much about it, but I'm, I'm curious to try it. Now, this is an Indo-Canadian writer, Rohinton Mystery. And this is his novel, Such a Long Journey. I read his later novel, A Fine Balance, a couple years ago, and it just obliterated me. It was so powerful and so tragic and so... It just ripped my heart out. I loved it so much. I think I'm finally emotionally ready to try another one. And this is an earlier novel. A Fine Balance was 1995, and this was uh, 1991. And this the story begins in Bombay in 1971, and I don't think any of us need to know more than that before we just dive in and have a bunch of boxes of Kleenex beside us. I don't think he's written anything since 1995. He lives in Canada. I hope there might be a, another one. But anyway, I've got a few to read before I can start really complaining. Rohinton Mystery. Such a long journey. And the last of my actual physical books is this one. Blame it on Eric Carl Anderson. He talked about this one in his... Oh my goodness. December book haul or something. Layla by Prayag Akbar. And this is a bit of a dystopian. This is considered to be... India's Handmaid's Tale. I'm not really into dystopian, but I would be willing to try any genre if it came from India. And this is brand new from Faber and Faber. Yeah, published in 2018. So now I'm going to check my Apple Books, or used formerly known as iBooks, my Kindle, and most especially my saved list on Scribd to see what other Indian fiction I have there, okay? Nothing on Apple Books. How about Kindle? On Kindle, I do have a gay Indo-American novel. I don't think I'm going to like it. So it might be a bail, but I'd be willing to try it with the right buddy reader, somebody who's not going to cry if I bail. It's called No One Can Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Satyal. I have it on my Kindle. I've read a couple pages. I wasn't impressed, but I'm willing to give it more of a try. That's it for Kindle. So I have quite a... More saved as uh, ebooks or audiobooks on Scribd. Oh, here's a tome. I can't remember how I found out about it, but I did, and it's bookmarked on my Scribd. It's a 640 page novel, at least in ebook format, it might be shorter in print, called The Toss of a Lemon by Padma Viswanathan. It's about a woman in India from the lower castes, married at the age of 10, widowed at 18, and goes from there. It seems like it's a fairly new new publication, but I'm not sure of that. This is not Erin Datty Roy. This is her cousin. <laughs> I don't know. Anna Rada Roy. And it's a novel called All the Lives We Never Lived. She's been nominated for the Man Booker Prize, too, for her novel called... I don't know which novel was nominated, but this is a sweeping novel set in India during World War II. Don't know... Much about Anuradha Roy, but here's a good place to pause and say, I loved, in a complicated way, Aaron Daddy Roy's novel that was nominated for a bunch of prizes last year or the year before. Uh, I went and grabbed it. It's the Ministry of Utmost Happiness. It didn't quite work as a whole novel, but I still absolutely loved it. I did it as an audio text combo. So, narrated by Aaron Daddy Roy, so every word of this story I heard Aaron Daddy Roy read in my ear as I turned the pages. It was wonderful. It didn't quite work, but it was still a masterpiece. And I have not read her first and only other novel, The God of Small Things, so I would 
be ecstatic to buddy read that this year as well. I don't have it, but I will get it. <laughs> this one is near the top of the list of books, in novels from India that I'm dying to read. And that is it's nomin nominated for some literary prizes when it came out, maybe the year before last. We That Are Young by Preti Tanaja. And it is a kind of a family saga. And the scion of the family returns to his hometown and his father or grandfather resigns from the corporation he had founded and then all hell breaks loose. But it's been almost universally praised. It's also a tome, 560 pages. I am dying to read it. Okay, I have gone through the list and that's what I've got. So, Natalie, so the rest of you, are you interested in buddy reading any of these with me this year? I mean, I'm also will be taking requests for next year too, but like I say, I'd like to read three or four of them in 2018 because I love Indian fiction. I'm looking forward to hearing Natalie's response. Maybe she'll contact me privately. Maybe she'll do her own video. Maybe she'll put some kind of fabulous comment below, but also from the rest of you. Group buddy reads are fabulous. The more the merrier. Thanks for watching.